Sunday morning and I've been over and done a little early morning Morrison's Hall. Again I did my cleaning on Saturday so Sunday's a free day for me, all sorts of things to do. Um, didn't get much in Morrison's today, wasn't really any vegetables, the only, well I say there aren't any, I've got two vegetables. So um, I got a deep punnet of mushrooms, they were 119 down to 71p. I got corn cobbets. These were one pound down to 75p. I don't know why I bought these. I mean, it's not much of a saving, is it? But I do quite like them. I also got Morrison's Best Coleslaw was one pound 45 down to 57p. And some caramelised onion hummus which was £1.35 down to 68p. So that's all I got this morning. I spent £2.71, and I should put the usual information up there. Um, I've had some comments about my recent video about the rent and about how disgraceful it is that my rent's gone up £75 a month. And someone else pointed out that that's a total of £900 over the course of a year, which makes it sound like not a lot. For the first four years that I lived here, my rent never went up. So my rent, when I first moved in, was £495 a month. It didn't go up for the first four years. And then post-Covid is when things started to rise. And I know that there were increases in costs, Everything went up, everything went through the roof, so I expected some kind of rise. Um, and people are saying that um, rent shouldn't go up by more than 10%. It's not in my contract, it's what the market will bear. In fact, the market would bear more, but I think because I'm an existing tenant, they're a little bit more lenient. Um, and the flat that's just been rented out underneath me is £100 a month more than I'm paying from October. So I know the market will bear it because they had so many people coming to view. So I know the market will bear it. If they wanted to put it up, they could put it up. And if I say that I don't want to pay the new rent, they'll say, OK, well then, bye. They're not going to haggle with me. My landlord is well known for being a cheapskate and being tight. He's got a reputation for it. He pushes the contractors that they bring in to do work on these places down to the last penny. Some of them are saying it's not even worth them doing the job anymore because they're getting paid so little. He's a seasoned landlord. Um, his father was also a landlord. The whole family are in the industry. If I say I'm not going to pay the increased rent, they'll say, all right, well, we won't renew your contract, bye. They've got people queuing up round the corner waiting for rent flats like this. They're not going to struggle to fill it. They don't even advertise them properly. They don't even put the toilet boards outside anymore because they just have so many people um, wanting to rent these places. And they'll get more money for it. If I go, they'll make more money. Why do they need me? And it's really just cutting my nose off to spite my face. Because where am I going to go? The rent I'm paying here is a third less than the average in the rest of my town. I don't get cleared for credit because of my job status, because I'm self-employed, which means uh, I, don't have, I don't have paychecks every week or every month. My money comes from wherever it comes from. Um, being a good rent payer doesn't count because it doesn't appear on your credit score. Savings do not count, and I tried this once before, before I moved here. I went to see a couple of places, I went to see three places actually, and one I went to, I'd agreed it, um, and then when it came to how I was going to pay the rent and I offered to pay um, like a six month in advance thing, they wouldn't touch me with a barge pole. I've had other places say that they won't rent to me because, and I say, well, I've got the savings for it. It's not like I haven't got the money. It's just that my income is irregular. I have backup money. And they say, well, savings don't count because you could spend that overnight. As if getting your paycheck and blowing it in one day isn't a thing. 
So by refusing to pay my rent here and my landlord going, OK, bye, because that's what he'll say, I am intentionally making myself homeless because then the only other place I can go is down to my parents. I don't want to live in a house share. I've lived a lot in house shares. They are horrific. I've never found a good house share. I don't do well living with other people. I'm a massive introvert. I like my space. I like the quiet. I like to be able to go into a kitchen and it's clean or how I left it. Not disgusting like I've seen in most of the house shares I've lived in and don't even get me started on bathrooms. I am not going into a house share unless I have absolutely no choice. Equally, I my business, um, when I first moved in here, I had a studio in town and then the building got sold off so I moved my business here. I have a lot of stuff. If I have to move, I have to take out a storage unit so I'm still paying costs. Um, it would just be a completely ridiculous thing to not pay that £75 a month increase. My rent has been going up for the last few few years by £50 a month. I've got used to that. This year it's gone up by 75 What happens next year, I don't know. I've now got, well, my new contract doesn't start till October, so effectively I've got 13 months to decide what to do. And I still have the same problem, is that within the next year, rent prices aren't going to go down. The economy isn't going to be sorted. We will still be in a cost of living crisis. The Labour government is not a magic wand. Things are going to continue to get worse. So things are not going to be easier this time next year when I'm considering signing another renewal. So what do you think I should do? Do you think I should refuse to pay my rent? and say, no, I'm not renewing, and go and live in my car, my tiny little car, go and live with my parents, who would not let me in anyway unless I had been forcibly home, made homeless. I'm a grown adult. If I refuse to pay a rent which my parents probably wouldn't even consider, because they have no idea what rent means. I mean, my parents paid off their mortgage like 20 years ago, so they have absolutely no idea what things cost anymore apart from the value of their own home but they live in a big relatively nice house in a very expensive part of the country they have no concept of what it means to be a renter so I can't have those conversations so what do you think I should do I'm still renting somewhere that's less than half what it costs to rent across the rest of the country. Just heard a f saw a flash. I was working on the computer. I just saw a flash. And then there was this almighty crash. And out of nowhere, lightning and thunder. It really made me jump. Birds are flying in every direction. <laughs> Scared the life out of the pigeons. I wonder if I'll get some more. It's a shame it's not night time, you might be able to see amazing lightning. You can see the flash, but it's the thunder that's really impressive right now. There's a couple walking down the road, they're an older couple. <laughs> and they're each walking down each side of the road, down the paths, and they're having a massive argument. But they're shouting at each other across the road. I guess that's the way to do it, otherwise you might lash out at them. People.
Today it's really dark. You can't see because I'm at the window. But if I take you on a, a little walkabout, this is how dark it is. This is my studio. It's dark. Um, I'm trying to work here and I've got this little light but it doesn't do very much. This is the light that I use. It's the directional light that goes on my um, sewing machine so that I can just see where the fabric's going. So uh, it sits on, on there and just directs the light at where the needle is. Um, now, hard to believe when it just looks this dark, and bear in mind this is also the 2nd of September. It's barely autumn, and it's been raining all day. It's not like really, well it was really heavy rain earlier, it's more like that really misty rain. But it's hard to believe that today I am... Um, I have decided that I am going car camping this week. The rest of the week, later on in the week, is looking really good. And I have planned what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep it a secret. You'll have to watch the videos when they come out, which will be after this one, I think. Because this week will be like a week in a life and then I'll be off car camping. And I will do some of the prep to go with that as well. Because I need to prep a little bit more. So I, I was going to buy like a blow up a camping mattress and try that in the car. And all these sorts of things. And I've decided against all that. And I'm just going to continue with the things that I already own. There's no point in me spending like 20 quid on a camping mat. For something that I might only use two or three times a year. So I've decided I'm going to keep on roughing it, but I'm going, to, I'm going to try another version of the sleeping arrangement. Now, I have to do a little bit of food prep this time, more than usual, because I no longer have any of those junky snacks that I used to have. So where I used to have, like, uh, pasties and things in the freezer that I could take out, defrost and take as camping food. I don't have any of that now. I have to make everything pretty much from scratch. So I'm going to, I've been given some um, like pots by one of my cleaning clients. They had some, those, um, I think they were, they were Slimming World pots and they're quite nice deep round pots. And I'm going to make some pasta I don't tend to eat much when I'm car camping, it's weird because I'm quite busy. Um, eating for me is very often a thing I do when I have nothing else to do. So when I'm car camping, I'm out, out walking around, I'm not eating. So I'm going to make some of this, I'm going to make a big wadge of pasta and put it in a couple of these pots. I'm going to make some bread. I haven't made bread since probably the beginning of the year, maybe even longer, may, may even have been last year. But I'm going to make some of that. That will be a good snack. Do I have anything I can put on bread? I'm sure I must have something. I think I've got a couple of jars of jam that I've been hoarding since last year in my store cupboard. I might take one of those. Or I might be cheeky and buy myself a jar of peanut butter or something. Where I'm going, there is a Sainsbury's. So I'm going to use that as my stop-off point for toilets and things. And I'm going to use Nectar Points to buy any additional food things that I might want. And I've already got in mind how I might do that. Um, wow, that's a lovely old classic car going past. That was stunning. I don't know what it was. <laughs> sorry, it's really old. Um, sorry, sidetracked as usual. So I'm going to do that prep, and I will do that as part of the car camping videos. And we'll just see what we can do. So I, I'll, I'll make the food that I can, and I've got my core box. So I'm going to take my milk and uh, I've got my tea and my coffee and I've got f uh, freezer packs which always they, they do the job they stay frozen for quite a while and then 
for the second day they keep enough chill in the cold box to keep everything in there okay and I tend not to take an enormous amount of food not that I have an enormous amount of food to take anyway because I don't have any snacks I think Sainsbury's will probably be where I end up to buy snacks but anyway so I'm not going to give away where I'm going I'm going to keep that as a surprise something in my hair what's that um but I am going to the beach I'm going to the coast for two days which is surprising when you look at the weather it's actually going to be really nice later on in the week I'm aiming for Thursday Friday because that's my time off this week today is Monday uh, I'm just getting on with jobs and I've got to clean because I have a, a flat inspection tomorrow morning and then I'm off to do my the second of my jobs with my new cleaning client so I'll be doing that for three hours tomorrow morning Wednesday I have a three hour clean I also have my evening clean on Tuesday evening and then I am going to go I'm Thursday morning I'm going to try and get off reasonably early um, I'm pretty sure the kids will go back to school this week fingers crossed so I shouldn't have any problems with there being so many people hopefully I'm just going to double check on the dates there, but I'm fairly sure the kids pretty much go back this week. So I'm hoping it will be a relatively quiet trip in terms of peopling. And I'm just going to keep an eye on the weather because it's been changing a lot. It's been showing up Thursday, Friday looking really, really good. And then yesterday it looked like it was going to be awful. And now today it's showing it's going to be really good again. So I need to stay flexible in case that changes again if it does change i could do monday tuesday next week or thursday friday next week so i've still got some time but i want to get this trip done before i go down to my parents in october because by the time i get back from there we are going to be well into autumn and i think it's probably going to be a bit too cold i'm thinking more about the nights when sleeping in a car is cold enough anyway and when the temperature really drops, it can get really, really cold. And sleeping when it's really, really cold is hard work. So that's that little update. I keep watching this space. And hopefully the next two videos after this are going to be me car camping and showing you how I do that. <laughs> this afternoon, because it's so dark, I thought I would show you my new gadget. So this is uh, something I bought off of eBay. It's an LED camping light. It's cost me just under six pounds and I thought I bought this for multiple reasons I wanted to try because it's a 55 watt bulb I wanted to try and see if it would work as a work light but the main reason I bought it was for my bathroom and this sounds like a strange thing but I have a light in my bathroom the problem is it's hardwired to an extraction fan on the wall but the extraction fan doesn't work properly anymore it doesn't extract anything and that's because it's just another one of those things that they don't upkeep here so that means that every time you switch on the bathroom light this fan goes on and God knows how much energy that's eating up because that's been in there at least 20 years and it keeps going for five minutes after you've switched the light off so I stopped using the light because A, I find the fan really irritating. They're quite loud. When my neighbours put their one on, I can hear that through my floor. And it doesn't do anything. So it's just a waste of electric. So I've what I tend to do, summer is easy because it doesn't get dark until late. So at night, the only real reason I need the, a light on is to brush my teeth and things like that. Uh, because I have street lights out the front and out the back of my property I'd get a bit of street light in so I tend not to use any of my overhead lights anymore so I thought I'd show you this light I better switch this on because it's so dark so this has five settings it charges um, it has a, a micro USB port and a regular USB port on the other end and you can plug it into a phone charger or a laptop and it takes a few hours to charge and then this is what you get pretty bright I think it will light up my whole, whole bathroom no problem this is it's designed as a camping light so if you were 
camping in a tent or you were in a motorhome or a caravan this would light up your space enough for you to do whatever you needed to do and I'm also going to be using it in my studio as a little work light because um, you can see that but it lights up the space around what I've got here really well because again I don't want to use the overhead light in my studio I mean today it's too dark to work in so this is fantastic uh, in winter it's going to be dark by four o'clock and if I want to work after four o'clock normally I stop working I tend to go with the light but this will do the job this is fine for working and if I did want to take this out car camping or something I could it's a fantastic little gadget I have to say so I'm going to take you back into the front room where the light is because my arm is starting to ache this has th uh, five settings on it so this is the brightest setting and then the other two settings are very marginal so it goes down one down one more and then you get two flashy settings I don't know what you do with these I mean you could strap this to your bike if you were cycling in the dark and it'll probably do a really good job um, this it's made of plastic it's really really light uh, I say I bought this on eBay I think this is absolutely brilliant for the price um, I mean it's LED so I presume it's got a decent lifespan on it it charges in about four hours and I think it lasts about the same length of time if you had it on all the time so it's pretty good so you can charge it in anywhere so if you were car camping or even if you were like in a tent but you'd driven to the camping ground you could charge that in your car in no time really good little gadget I'm so pleased I bought that so that's going to be handy for multiple things but mostly for my bathroom so I can avoid wasting electricity with my stupid extractor fan so that's my product review for the day I don't usually do product reviews because I don't usually buy anything um, and I certainly don't buy things that I don't need this I thought would be a really useful little thing to have and I've just got that on there so that I can hang it lower but you can work out how you want to hang it the hook on it is okay it's not you know it's a proper hook and it it moves around so that you can get to the USB port and I you know I think this is going to get a lot of use this winter depressingly but yeah I did a product review look at that you know how people say the internet's always watching you and your phone's always listening to you? Well, yesterday my parents went on holiday. And since then, whenever I open up Google Maps, it's opening up where they are. Which is really weird because... I haven't searched for it on Google Maps and my parents don't have social media so I don't know how that's linking. Does anyone have any ideas on this? I just find it a bit weird. This morning I'm off to the second of my new cleaning job days. So this new one is three hours every fortnight and I'm now on the second fortnight. It comes around so fast. I'm really not in the mood for this today but it gets me out and sometimes being forced to go out and do things when you're not in the mood or you're just feeling lazy is just the way it is. I was at my kitchen window last night. My kitchen sink is in front of the window and it looks out on the back. And one of the neighbours from across the way was standing there snorting cocaine off the top of a wheelie, lin wheelie bin lid. Very classy round here. If you just pass through or you never look out of your windows, 
you probably wouldn't know all this stuff is going on around you but when you're around a lot like because I work from home a lot you start to see some of the behavior in the town and I noticed it more when we went into lockdown in 2020 because the only people on the streets as a general rule turned out to be drug dealers we had loads of it going on there was a guy who lived over the back from me he's not there anymore he's gone he was a drug dealer and he was doing a roaring trade in 2020 people would come down the road and they'd stop at the the corner of his street and he'd run out with his little baggies and they'd be off so there were people out all over the place during covid and it was a guy who used to deal out the front of a local church as well but you see it a lot I mean several of my neighbors are weed smokers and you see them rolling the joints before they get in their cars and go to work in the morning a lot of uh, drugs being smoked while people drive around I mean you walk around town you can smell it all around you it's coming out of bedroom windows it's um, coming out of car windows there are people walking past you it's everywhere I mean at this point you might as well legalize everything because nobody cares literally nobody cares anymore it's such a mess and they talk about things like cannabis being gateway drugs and a lot of people who end up on harder stuff if you ask them where it all started it usually starts with well it was a little bit of weed it was a little bit of this or it was starting to drink underage and we have a lot of kids around here who are already on vapes they're already on um, the gas you know that they get out the, the helium balloons we get a lot of that and it's such a shame because these these kids are gonna end up you just know where they're gonna end up but I did I can't remember if it was an article I read or a podcast I listened to that said if you have if you're predisposed, um, predisposed towards mental health issues and you might even not even know it you might have never had anything more than you know the odd pint on a Sunday lunchtime and been fine never had a problem with addiction never had any mental health issues and then you might you know start on weed and it can open a doorway in your brain that you then can't shut and there's no going back from that so that can happen I've done my drinking days in my 20s and my 30s mostly in my 20s really but I don't really have I mean, apart from food <laughs> I wouldn't say I have an addictive nature I get bored of things that don't give back so with drinking for instance you just end up broke and with a hangover you don't get anything back from it so it gets boring and I was, had never had any interest in drugs because I don't need it and I can't afford it anyway and I've reached the point where I literally don't buy anything that I don't need in my life because it's unaffordable I watched a couple of short YouTube videos this morning and one was about how they're talking about bringing in the pence per mile on driving and getting rid of car tax and instead charging you pence per mile and they reckon it could be like six pence per mile and it's like seriously six pence per mile will mean that my cheap car tax because I've got a small car so my car tax is 20 pounds a year I don't drive that much because it's not just the car tax you've got the petrol issue so I try not to drive that much I've driven more this year because of the hiking because of getting to those places but a six pence per mile will mean instead of me paying 20 pounds a year for car tax I'm going to be paying 120 pounds just to get and see just to go and see my parents four times a year
don't even count anything else. So it's really worrying, and they're talking about how the council tax is likely to go up, and they're going to put the pro put, they were thinking about putting another ten pence on fuel duty. It's just we're going to be so poor, and of course in October we've got our energy bills going up by ten pen, um, ten percent. We are absolutely screwed. So thank you to all those people that voted Labour in. Um, if you were voting Labour just to see the Tories crash and burn, I hope you're enjoying how much your life is going to cost in the months going forward. We are absolutely screwed for the next four years and probably beyond that because the damage that is done by these things ricochets and affects people for years and it's absolutely terrifying. Absolutely blooming terrifying. I mean, I can up my income if I have to. I could jack all the side hustles in and go back to a job if I can find one. I don't want to because I like my quality of life. But if you if you have no choice, then what do you do? But there are people who can't. And I don't know, I would imagine the governments are hoping that a few of those people will just disappear. They'll probably die from exposure to the cold this winter or die of starvation because they can't afford to buy any food. And still the government's target the people who can't fight back because they are scared of the money they won't touch the billionaires they won't touch the corporations the big companies who have tax loopholes they won't tackle the problem of huge CEO and manager pay rises whilst customers struggle to put food on the table. It's just disgusting. The whole country is just an absolute economic disaster zone. And a lot of these things I'm talking about haven't even happened yet. It's incredibly concerning.
I like to play the credit card game. So I only take out credit cards when I have a 100% pre-approval on ClearScore, which is where I have my credit score. Every so often they will send me uh, a bunch of credit cards, here's the different approval ratings, and sometimes there'll be one that'll be like a pre-approved card. And that means that you are guaranteed to be accepted, provided your details have not changed. And so I've applied for this new credit card, which is a new credit company called Jar Jar or Yar Yar. They're a UK credit card company. And I've been pre-approved for, it looks like I've got a £1,200 credit limit. And it's 0% interest on purchases for nine months which means I can buy all of my other things that I don't normally pay, that I usually pay for on credit, not percent for nine months. So I can put them all on the card up to the limit and then pay it all off in nine months, which basically means that I can keep all the money that I would have spent on, say, petrol and dental appointments and food and any other little bits and pieces and I can keep that money in my savings account and then when I get close to the end of the nine months of free purchase um, agreement I can just pay it all off and then get rid of the card if I want to. Um, I've had this with all my previous cards so I've had a marbles card which had uh, I think it was a six month interest free period and I had a John Lewis card which I think was a year, might have been a year, it was a longer one and I've kept those two cards because they work really well for my finances. This one I think I will keep for the nine months and uh, and then just pay it off and get rid of the card. But this is a really good way to use your finances. If you, can, if you have some kind of reasonable credit score rating, then companies through the credit score will sometimes give you guaranteed pre-approvals. There's no point in me trying to apply for a credit card and yes, I've got a pre-approved agreement, they won't take me. It's like trying to get rental approval. They won't touch me because I'm self-employed, but when you're pre-approved through your credit score company, that means they're basically guaranteeing that you are gonna be a good customer because they look at, at your spending past. So that means that once that card comes through, uh, which will probably be the next week or so, I can put all my spending on there for the next nine months. Um, so as long as I'm within that limit and they may up that limit as well during that time and I don't have to pay it so I can keep all the money that I would have spent on all those things in the savings account and not have to pay it off every month that is how you work the credit card system it doesn't work for everybody um, and I haven't had a credit card pre-approval when was the last time I had one? two years ago Got to grab them while they're there. It's not even eight o'clock and it's already too dark outside to use natural light to record my Tuesday evening yellow sticker hauls. This is really depressing, I have to say. And uh, the artificial light is not great. Anyway, you'll have to bear with me because this is going to be it from now on. So, I did a Morrison's haul this evening. I've been over and done my Tuesday evening clean. Uh, I'm back a bit later than usual, the boss was in the office and everyone gets talking, you know, he's a bit of a talker. Anyway, so I spent £4.44 today. I've got quite a good range of things. So one thing I got is strawberries, which have opened in the bag, which is not helpful. Because now I have strawberries everywhere. Hey ho. This was a massive um, 600 gram that was £3.29 down to 83p. I have to rinse that all off. What a mess. I have a Chinese cabbage which needs it's got strawberry juice in it now. It was £1.39 down to 35p. I'm going to put that in some water. Uh, what else has been soaked? Oh, I did buy a baguette for tomorrow because Wednesday is a cleaning day. That has strawberry juice on it as well. 
That was three pounds down to seventy five p. I went for the egg and cress again because I like egg and cress. I got uh, two fish cakes. I've had these before. These are okay. Um, I'm not sure if these are cod or the haddock ones. These were one pound seventy nine down to forty five p. These are going in the freezer for definite. I also got some roast top side of beef sliced uh, off probably the deli counter. This was £3.10, down to 78p. Some tomatoes. Uh, pack of tomatoes, these were 95p, down to 24 Literally everything is covered in squash tomato juice. Ugh. I have uh, fine green beans, were £1.25, down to 32p. Two... Garlic and coriander naan breads, 185 down to 47p. They will probably go in the freezer as well. And I bought organic carrots. So this is dripping everywhere. There is so much strawberry juice. Um, I bought these. I don't normally buy these, but they were one pound down to 25p. And I need carrots. And that's it. And now I have to clean everything up before I can do anything else. So, as usual, I shall put the info up there. And then you can see what they would have cost me full price and what I saved on the yellow sticker spend. And that's it for Tuesday. Tomorrow we have a clean. And then I am packing for my car camping trip. Getting exciting. The weather's looking really good. Unless it suddenly, miraculously changes overnight. Who knows? But it's looking really good. I'm kind of organised, I made my bread, I've got other things that I can now take with me because I've got um, tomatoes, I could put some of that beef in the pasta that I make, um, yeah this is all good to go and probably take some strawberries as well because I think they're going to need eating. So that's that for Tuesday. This morning is Wednesday, I'm in my car waiting to go to my Wednesday cleaning job. I'm running really early, so I'm sitting in the car like an idiot. It's either sit here and be a bit early, or sit there and be a bit early. I'll probably do a bit of each. And I hate being late for things. Um, so, yeah, so I'm doing my clean. Then I've got to go to the post office and put the cash in from that job and yesterday's into the post office. And I have to go over to the in-post boxes, but for the every service because I sold two items on Shopify overnight. Yes. It's always nice to wake up in the morning to an order. So I packaged that all up and got that ready this morning and then I shall drop it over the road when I get back. Um not very organised with my packing for my car camping trip which looks like it's going ahead. Weather's looking really good. It's going to be about 19 degrees and cloudy tomorrow. And then Friday it's going to be about 24 and clear skies and sun and proper coastal weather. So I think that will work really well. And that all looks like it's um, doing what it should be doing. Let me have another quick look at that. I keep checking because it changes so fast. And I want to be sure that I'm not going in rain because that will be really depressing. Yeah, 19 and cloudy tomorrow and then... 24 degrees and beautiful sunshine on Friday, which will be absolutely perfect. So I've got to, so I did the bread, you've seen the bread. I've got to make the pasta. I'm just going to do a simple couple of pots of simple pasta. I've got to dig out my, uh, my cool box. I've got some freezer packs to go in there, a frozen bottle of milk to go in there. So that'll help that all stay nice and cold. Um, I need to pack all my boots and my um, bathroom type stuff that I'm taking, very simplified. I try to pack as light as I possibly can because I don't want tons of stuff in here. The majority of the stuff that's going to take up the room is going to be the bedding. So I've got to pack some blankets and some pillows to make this seat my passenger seat more comfortable. I'm going to take one of the duvets off my bed as my 
bedding. I'm going to give that a go. That's the only thing I haven't tried yet. I've had blankets before and things, and it's I'm just not warm enough. So I'm going to take one of the duvets, but because it's a king size duvet, I'm going to double it up. So I should be like the middle in a sausage roll, and I'm hoping that will do the job. If it doesn't, I'm just going to be a bit cold and not get any sleep. I have planned my routes and my stopping points and supermarkets and layovers and car parks with my usual military precision. I don't leave anything to chance. I know what I'm doing on every day and where I am going. It's a nice easy trip. There's nowhere I have to be out of by a certain time and everything that I need is relatively close. So I have my day parking planned and my walking plan for the day. I know where I am going to be. I need to go, I need to get petrol. I'm playing, playing a little bit of Russian roulette with my petrol because I've got a, a, a points voucher with Sainsbury's but the amount that I need to put in my car, money-wise, is quite high for my little car, so it depends on what the petrol prices are like at the moment. But I reckon I've got enough petrol in the car to get me to where my destination is, and there is a Sainsbury's petrol station there. And so I'm planning on using that towards the end of the day. And... There's a Sainsbury's store, which I will use in the evening. I'm going to go and use that to go and prep my car, and then I shall nip in there, use the bathroom, and maybe buy one or two bits for food the next day, because I've got all my nectar points, which is handy. That's free food. And then in the morning, I have a walk all the way from where I'm parking overnight, where I can leave the car for the day, and I can walk all the way down the seafront to where there is a Morrison's, so I can go and use the bathroom there, get anything else that I might need, and then I will spend the day being a seaside tourist, taking all my usual bits and bobs, and I will record, I won't record it like a hike, you're not going to get every single step but I will hopefully do you a nice overview of the places I'm going. There are three places I'm going, uh, but again, that will all be on the actual car camping videos. I usually end up doing two videos. I do one of each day. I will probably do that this time. We'll see how much footage there is. It'll probably end up being two, because I'm not very good at not talking, as you've probably worked out by now. So I'm looking forward to that. That will break up this week nicely. Uh, the next two weeks are normal. And then in October, I'm going to my parents for two weeks, which I'm really looking forward to. And that'll get me out of this zone and just be a break. And then we're on that last schlep towards the end of the year already absolutely blooming crazy end of the year it's already September and everyone else I talk to says how fast the year has gone I finally hey I finally got a chance yesterday my neighbor who moved in at the beginning of the year and I haven't yet had a chance to meet was chatting to the new neighbor downstairs underneath me who still hasn't moved in they're still waiting for cleaners to come and sort out the flat before they move in good luck with that one it takes forever I've been waiting three weeks I'm still waiting to get my stairs sorted so I don't break my neck um, it's slow because they have to find a kind of contractor to do it then they have to get his price then they have to get the cost approved by the landlord because the landlord has to pay for it and as I've said before my landlord is well known for being very tight he quibbles over every penny and that's why things take so long because you don't want to pay for anything 
and contractors hate that. It is what it is. <laughs> so that's why I'm in no expectation of getting this done anytime soon. But anyway, so yeah, so my neighbours underneath still haven't moved in, but I got to meet my neighbour who moved in at the beginning of the year who I still hadn't met. Really nice chap. Um, has a partner who he doesn't live with, who lives in the next town over. Um, he really likes it here. But I think that he is quite oblivious to a lot of the stuff that I see going on. And I think most people are, because if you're not around a lot, like I'm at home quite a lot, I'm, I'm working from home, so when you hear things and you see things happening around you, you get to know what's going on. And once you've seen it, this is the problem, once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. Once you know it's going on around you, you start looking for it. Uh, and because I have, like, I like to have my windows open and my blinds back, I like to let the light and the air in, it means that you are hyper aware of everything that's going on around you because you can hear it and you can see it and it's, you know, and as I said, that's the problem. Once you know it's happening, it's really hard not to see more of it. Anyway, um... Yeah, that's that update. Won't be much else to update today. I think that probably this is going to be the end of this vlog. It's probably long enough already. And the next time you see me, we will be hitting the road. Going on a little road trip. So thank you for watching this. Thank you to all of you who watch regularly and those of you who don't, you know, every 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 watch counts. I know some YouTube people say, oh, you shouldn't say like and subscribe, but do like and subscribe. It does help. Um, and I really enjoy making these videos. I do it as a creative outlet. I do it as a mental outlet. I do it as a... A creative thing for me to do because I enjoy doing stuff like this and it adds to my repertoire of things that I do and keeps me occupied and focused and in touch with the world because I hear about all the things that are going on with you guys and it reminds me that I'm not losing my mind <laughs> Dear. Anyway, so I'm going to get on with my Wednesday morning clean and I shall catch you on the next one. Speak to you soon. Bye bye.